You're listening to the Major Pod Network, the only place where your favorite toy store, card shop, arcade, theme park, and arena are all on the same block. Scratch that major itch. Welcome, everyone, to episode 41 of MC True Long Island Story. I'm your host, the internet champion, always ready, Matt Cardona. I'm also here, producer of the show, Smart Mark Sterling Esquire. Uh, and this show is brought to you by Paps. There we go. Take a little sip there. Uh, this is mm, one of the biggest episodes, well, these, I think. These are very rare, these seltzers, so I don't know if I want to open them up. Kind of like the Ecto Cooler. <laughs> Like you wish you would have saved those extra coolers from back in the day, from the eighties. Uh, even is the ones true? now are very rare. Is it true that the seltzers are are no more, or is that a rumor? I heard they're on the endangered species list. Oh man! <clears throat> oh man! Come so, on, it's my favorite thing. So some of these are going to stay props for now. Right. Well, <clears throat> we have a huge episode here. Uh, so let's dive in with a with a few plugs. I usually talk about this at the end of the show, but we've got to talk about it right now. I am currently wearing my exclusive FWF Live 2 shirt. Um, and why is that, Matt? That's because tonight, by the way, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. No, oh, yeah. You're listening Thursday. Uh, FWF Live 2, um, available 8 p.m. streaming. You can watch it for about... Uh, a week or so afterwards. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, the Major Pod Network, Major Wrestling for Podcast, our second show. We're all in action. Smart Mark takes on VSK. Brian Myers takes on Tatanka. And if you're a fan of the original YouTube show, you'll like this match. Matt Cardona versus The Big O. 10 years in the making, Long Island Street Fight. So go to MajorWFPod.com to order a lot of cool merch bundles available. Mm-hmm. Um, and the majority of those bundles come with Headbangers Micro Brawlers, exclusive to FWF Live 2. Because the Headbangers are also wrestling on the show. and In 2021, the bangers, baby. Bone crush in action. I mean, you guys recently wrestled them, but they look great. Uh, and let me pitch the show a little bit. For, for you people out there who might not uh, be really ingrained in the major pod network universe... This wrestling show is really like an amalgamation of all of the podcasts on our network. MC, Game Marks, Card Foundation, uh, Major Land, uh, you know, Major Wrestling Figure Podcasts. There's characters from all of these shows, and we're all meeting on a professional wrestling pay-per-view, which we forget is the reason we're here. We collect wrestling figures. We talk about wrestling events. We talk about wrestling cars. We play wrestling video games. So at the center of that is professional wrestling. And we, the Major Pod Network, are putting on our own pay-per-view. This is the second one. And if you order this one, you immediately get the first one. So you can watch that one, catch up, and then watch the second one. Okay, I'm done pitching FWF. You get two shows for the price of one. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, two great shows. And uh, I would suggest... If you've never seen FWF Live 1 to watch that, and even if you have, get a little recap. Mm-hmm. Oh, 100%. You know, and we'll be doing a live watch along tonight um, using the hashtag um, FWF Live 2, like the number two, yep. and hashtag Major PBR, and a nice little watch along tonight. So yeah. eat some turkey and crack open a PBR. Those watch alongs are really fun. All right. What yeah. do you got for follow up? Anything? I got some things. Uh, not follow up, but as I was watching this episode, this is a big episode. I think this is like the peak of the peak yep. of the YouTube run. Uh, a lot of stuff we need to address. Not much follow up from last week, though. Um, anything from you? Yeah, I got a couple comments. <clears throat> okay. okay. Zayad Ashraf says, you did a couple of episodes. So a lot of people wanted to comment on episodes that we should talk about once the 50 is over. So okay, he said you did a couple episodes that I considered cool back then. It wasn't you talking to us about what happened that week. It seemed like behind the scenes, like there was this episode when you were trying to talk to Eve and yell at Chi because he's filming his show with your title. With your title, remember that episode? That was very interesting. So there's that. Fernando Perez, 
Did uh, he says? Did tickets for Live Eleven go already already go on sale? I live in Orlando. Would like to go, Fernando. They have not yet. We will keep you. They posted. have not. They have not. They will go on sale sometime in December. Uh, the show is uh, late January. I believe it's the twenty eighth. Is that the the date, Mark? Yes. The twenty eighth of the January. Friday. There, the last Friday. In yes. January. Uh, in Orlando, tin roof, uh, hundred tickets. Everybody's VIP. And I've been talking to a lot of our surprise guests, trying to uh, you know get those 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 dotted lines signed, you know, for those Perfect. contracts. Let's get with yeah. a lot of people in Orlando. Patrick Patrick Fitzgerald, add the IC title and that Mania Week to the list of episodes, please. Something to consider. Just sort of talking about that. Mm. Maybe we can answer. I'm not a saying no, about. but it's not a full. No, episode, I think that would be better. That would be for like the general Q and A episode that I want to do. Remember that, Fitzgerald. Ask that then. Yeah. Jack Connor. For me, some of the year two shows that stand out have been have to be number sixty five, where you guys dress up like the Avengers, and episode number eighty eight, Rider Takes Manhattan. That one especially is classic. A couple people mentioned Rider Takes Manhattan. Rider Takes Manhattan. That's on my list. We will do that. Uh, someone also mentioned there's an episode where it's like an alternate universe. Yeah. I don't remember that, so I'd like to do that one. Okay. That sounds great. Yeah, I'd like to do the fun ones. I don't want to do like, you know, Berry, Berry, Berry City, you know? We're going to cover that with the cane and stuff like that. Right. Harry Flint, uh, it was THQ because THQ left around 2013 and 2014. That was the video game thing you were talking about. Yeah, that's when the the royalties for the video games went. Right. And then Harry Flint also says. The first year. Oh, I'm not coming off. So the royalties for these video game checks were insane. Like yeah. my first ever one, I was just downloadable and I got it. I was like, I literally, my dad it was WrestleMania week because of like, you know, it's a quarterly check. You get it the next quarter. And my dad read me the, the amount over the phone and I, I dropped, <laughs> I dropped to the bed. I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. Uh, so those were some nice, nice checks. But then when they switched from, uh, THQ to 2K, the check was like a fourth of that, like a quarter of that. And I was like, what? And the, the excuse was, oh, we switched companies, blah, blah, blah. But then they never went back up. <laughs> right, 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 right. So it was kind of like, so like, yes, being in the video game is cool. I would, you know, be in a video game for free. Mm-hmm. You know, I shouldn't say that, but I would. Yeah. Uh, but it's a lot cooler to get that big ass check. Hell yeah. Because we would count, I don't know about everybody else, but for me, someone like me, I would count on that check to pay my taxes for the year. Aha. Uh-huh. You know what I'm saying? Interesting. And then that one year, the one year the check comes as a quarter of that. <laughs> what? With no warning? <laughs> right. You know? All right. that, that is, that's an interesting uh, way to do it. Cool. Yeah. Lastly, Harry Flynn says, and we'll talk about this more, <clears throat> is Morrison would leave WWE the week of November 28th, 2011, after losing to The Miz in a Falls Count Anywhere match. So, very interesting. Ten years to the day, the Miz, uh, John Morrison leaves the company again. Pretty wild. And the fact that a lot of dirt sheets were picking up that Morrison was on his way out of WWE because we killed him off on the YouTube show uh, before he actually leaves WWE, technically. Oh. I remember Unless hearing wrong, that and- like way before. Because I remember going into Survivor Series having read that he was leaving and being like, why didn't they give Ryder this match? He's not right. even getting to be here. Right. If my memory serves me correctly, we do the episode where he blows up and then he leaves like that Monday. Right. Um, I mean, it could be that he leaves that Monday and then the episode comes out, but I don't think that, I don't think that's the way it went down. I think we do the episode, then he leaves. Right. Well, there's some all time stuff in this episode, uh, and we're gonna get to a lot of the stuff that happened a uh, ten years ago to this week. But first, uh, a little word from our sponsor when we come back. The Bros Give the Week. The Major Pod Network has a new tag team partner, Paps Blue Ribbon. Everybody needs some liquid courage to make their own weekly purchases. Scratch that figure itch and scratch that PBR itch. Get your PBR beer, get your PBR hard coffee, and get your PBR stronger seltzer. 8%? If you're listening to this, you're already a major mark. 
Now it's time to become a Major PBR Mark. Use the hashtag Major PBR and post your pictures and videos of you Major marking out. Paps Blue Ribbon and the Major Pod Network, the new tag team champions of the world. Of the world! But we're definitely not getting any new figures from Mattel. Broski of the week. All right, guys, the broski of the week. All you got to do is leave a review wherever you get your podcast, screenshot it, and tweet it to me. Go to my my Twitter account at the Matt Cardona. Go to the pin tweet at the top, quote tweet it, and in that quote tweet, use the hashtag broski of the week and post your review. So the review this week comes from at nxchar. Um, it was 2011, and 15 year old me would look forward to Z T L I S every week. We want Ryder, the Ryder Revolution. It felt like I was part of something big. Matt has always been my favorite wrestler, and being on that Z T L I S journey to get him pushed towards his dreams is an amazing feeling. Having the throwback with M C T L I S brings back that feeling. There's so much nostalgia, and I'm loving every bit of it. Matt and Z T L I S had such an impact on me. My passwords for most everything had been Z T L I S related, uh, mostly because my memory is bad. And Z T L I S and Matt's journey is Zach Ryder's unforgettable, making it easy to not forget my passwords. LOL. Anyways, M C T L I. Oh my God! Say it all as T L I S is. <laughs> Tongue tying me. Uh, it's my favorite podcast. Walk down memory lane. Thank you, Matt and Mark. You guys are the best. Keep up the amazing work. I'm always ready for more. Well, uh, you are the broski of the week. Hell and yeah. you will be getting uh, this 8x10 available on mattcardonamerch.com. You'll be getting the headband. Guys, <laughs> I got some bookings this week. I got AIW. I got WrestleCade. Um between that and macronomers.com, these headbands are going to be sold out. So if you're listening today, I would order it because I'm not ordering more. This mm-hmm. is it. Mm-hmm. Once they're gone, they're gone. And then you will get the Broski of the Week sticker, uh, only available to the Broskis of the Week. So thank you. You're the Broski of the Week. And I Perfect. believe this is our first uh, first female Broski of the Week. Oh, that's awesome. I, I'm sure there, there might have been one before, but this is the, the first one I can recall. Right. Perfect. My microphone's falling down. Okay. All right, let me read you the tweets while you're fixing your microphone. Ten years ago today, well, this week, November 24th, <laughs> you say, I am thankful for my broski. So happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Still am. Uh, November 20th, this was Survivor Series. Who wants Ryder? Obviously, we want Ryder. Um, November 21st, hey, real Kelly Kelly, I have more Twitter followers than you. Let's make out. <laughs> <laughs> November 23rd Jesus. This is interesting Hashtag are you serious bro is, tre- is trending on Twitter again So that's pretty cool November 21st Thank you MSG Broskies Broke the record for most Broski shirts sold in one night Obviously What a hot at night MSG? For- MSG so that night at Wow At uh I mean it's Survivor Series At Survivor Series you sold the wow. most Broski shirts so Awesome and last one, a little question with this one, November 19th. Headed to Kmart and NYC to sign some autographs with the Bella Twins. Hashtag, I can look and I can touch. <laughs> and I can't touch, sorry. Um, I So Survivor Series, there was a lot of you know promotion leading up. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things I had to do was a signing at Kmart with the Bella Twins. And that was the Kmart that I would go to all the time. I knew it. In Penn Station, so That's like what I was you know, ask. I'd go to the city and I would uh, go to New York City. I'd go to that Penn Station uh, Kmart, check for figs, uh, Royal Rumble two thousand. I go and I buy like orange oak tag and make a Taz with two Z signs. So that was like my it wasn't my local Kmart, but it was Kmart. I always went to that yeah. Kmart. Yeah, of course. So it was cool to to you know sign there, do the signing there with the Bell Twins. Um, it's just crazy. That Ten years. Has flown by because it seems like just yesterday I was there and then my cousin Brian took me out at some nice taco place in uh, Manhattan, but mm. it was 10 years ago, so holy shit. Man, that's crazy. All right, <clears throat> matches you had this week. So nothing at Survivor Series, but you did run out and you do the little, uh, you do the Rough Rider. Um, 11-21-11, so on Raw, Alberto Del Rio defeats <laughs> Zack Ryder at 2 minutes and 24 seconds at... 
the Giant Center in Hershey, Pennsylvania, USA. Now, I don't want to get negative, but on Sunday night, <laughs> people are chanting, we want Ryder while The Rock is trying to talk. You sell the most Broski shirts you can possibly sell in MSG. You get We Want Ryder chance during the entire U.S. title match. And then the next night they go, you know what? Let's feed them to Alberto Del Rio and two more <laughs> uh, Listen, yeah, I'm not going to get negative either. I will say this. I do remember that they do replay The Rock doing his post-Survivor Series promo with the We Want Ryder chance. They mm-hmm. replay that during Raw because that was not live. That was, you know, the pay-per-view went off the air. So they did play that. Um, I don't remember the exact timing, so I guess they play that. I come out, and then I lose. <laughs> but they did play it. They didn't have to play it, but they did. Uh, but yeah, a weird booking decision in my opinion. But hey, I'm not the booker, man. But do you think that like, if, if you had to guess one way or the other, is this A, this idiot, take this, or is this B, they don't understand what's happening Let's just. I think it's we, a little bit of both. Okay, man, pretty crazy. However, that yeah. being said, eleven twenty two eleven, Mohegan Sun Arena in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. Sheamus and Zack Ryder defeat Dolph Ziggler and Zach, and Jack Swagger in almost a seventeen minute TV match on Friday Night SmackDown. All right, so then on SmackDown, I get a nice little win there. Yeah, especially against. I think you pin Ziggler again. So okay. Whatever. Uh, Alberto's a top guy at the time. You're a U.S. title guy, I guess, but still. A little weird. All right, let's talk about Survivor Series. We'll back up a little bit. Survivor Series, New York City, Madison Square Garden, 16,749 people. The buy rate is 281,000. Tagline, the most charismatic tag team of all time, never before, never again. Did that ever happen again? Did they ever tag again? Who knows? Not that I can recall. All right. Dolph Ziggler defeats John Morrison, 10 minutes. Beth Phoenix defeats Eve Torres in a Lumberjill match, 5 minutes. Team Barrett defeat Team Orton. Big Show defeats Mark Henry in 13 minutes. CM Punk defeats Alberto Del Rio by submission for the WWE Championship in 17 minutes. So they're giving your match was to get a little heat back for Alberto. Ah, It makes sense. I get it. Okay. Okay. Context is king, right? I, I guess. He loses the match. The most popular guy. Let's beat him. Get some heat. Could have been a little there longer. There you go. Yeah, I could. That's what I'm saying. John Cena and The Rock defeat The Awesome Truth in 21 minutes and 33 seconds. I was there. Um, I loved every second of it. I was, I was there. I'm going to be totally honest with you. Obviously, you want to see The Rock. The Rock's coming back. He's going to tag with John Cena. Holy crap. This is cool. But also, I was really, I'm being honest, I was engrossed in this storyline, and I thought there was something that you were going to do in this match. And you did. In the, t- in the, in the Ziggler-Morrison match? Yeah. So, do you want to talk about this now or, or later in the show? What do you think? Let's talk about it later in the show when we get to it. Okay. All right. And then, uh, I, I talked about Raw, uh, what you did, and then on SmackDown... Dolph Ziggler's talking crap, and then whatever you beat him. So there you go. Uh, so the same that's the same stuff happening on on Raw and SmackDown, continuing the storylines. But here we go, episode forty one of Z True Long on Story, one of the most important episodes of the season. Star studded opens with Jimmy Hart. Um, first of all, I love Jimmy Hart. I worked with him once. I I was in a tag team with a man. Yeah, baby. Fans, a tag team with Jimmy Hart. Uh, maybe about four years ago, five years ago, and he was so cool, wanted to do anything we wanted to do. Uh, he hit me with the megaphone, which is super cool. Oh, that's great. Uh, he's a great guy. So uh, tell me about this open. Uh, did he ask you or did you ask him? I asked him. I, I love Jimmy Hart. He still looks like his LJN figure, oh, even to this day, 10 yeah. years later. Uh, so as part of this New York City promotional stuff, me and, and Jimmy Hart, like you know those like tour buses that go around New York City? Yeah. And you're like on the top and you're like, you know, with people in there. I don't know. And this is where this is. And this is where this is. Absolutely. Yeah. We were like on it as like hosts. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But it's fucking November. 
New York City, it was freezing. Mm. It was so cold. I remember like, like I'm like, this is, like I don't know how much longer I could, with the wind, I don't know how much longer I could stay up here. And they gave us like these hand warmer things and it was just, I'm not gonna lie, it was fucking brutal. It was like miserable. I couldn't enjoy myself. Like I'm trying to be friendly to to these fans or and some of them aren't even fans, they're just like New York City civilians. You know? <laughs> um, so you and Jimmy are on the bus. Yeah. Okay. Um, and like I don't even know if the Survivor series like logo is anywhere on the bus. It must have been, because like if someone can find photos, fo- there's gotta be photos online. D Freedom will probably find some photos of this. Mm. Um I would assume there's some sort of like wrapping around this bus that says like Survivor Series MSG or else it's just me and Jimmy Hart on the top freezing our balls off. Right, that's weird. Uh, but then afterwards, wherever we were in the green room, I asked him to just do the open and he did it. Absolute pro. Perfect. Hey, well, he butchered it a little bit, but but we'll we'll give him a pass yeah, on it. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> yeah, baby. Yeah, it's one of those you take the take, you go, perfect, man. <laughs> perfect, Jimmy. That was great. <laughs> yeah. That was great, Jimmy. All right, regular open after that. Uh, it's, this is the first time you have like a cold open, like a like we do this. So first of all, we cold open every episode of the Major Wrestling Figure Podcast with a a wrestling celebrity or a major pod character. Yep. So this is the first time you've done it on this show. So that's pretty neat. I'm also um, wearing in this open uh, a new hoodie. They, like I said yeah. from last week, there's just merch, new merch, new merch, new merch. And I am not. This has nothing to do with anything, but I am not a pullover hoodie guy. Mm-hmm. This is like, oh, this sucks. I can't really like. Mess I can't wear hair. this in real life. Yeah. It's just like uh, I'm, not, I'm a zip guy, zip yeah, pulley, zip too. pulley, <laughs> zip pulley. Oh my god, take a shot, take a swig of the PBR. Um, then you go to a random picture, like it's a Photoshop picture of you and Laurenitis. Uh, but then you talk about uh, the We Runt Rider chats uh, chance in the Dolph match. So let's talk about Survivor Series, just like the whole All thing, because right. because we go into the into the Rock thing right after this. So uh, all right, so now now that everything's coming back to me. We definitely film the explosion scene the night before Survivor Series. Okay. On Long Island. Okay. And then myself, Ziggler, Morrison, we all drive into New York City together. They all slept in my apartment in Long Beach. We drove into the city together. I think we went to the gym first. At Roosevelt Field, Export Fitness, went to the city together. I don't know if I'm doing anything. Like, I'm not... I don't even know if I was actually booked to be there. You know what I'm saying? I think I might have just went, like hoping, like, oh, they got to do something with me. Right. And then I remember, um, like, very, very early in the day, they were like, just some, you've been there, you've been an extra before. Sometimes they test, like, the trons on the screen. Yep. And for this particular uh, pay per view, there were these giant, like, rectangles on, like, each side of the tron. And it would be like a full body image of the superstar. And like they were testing things and mine came up like, oh, okay, I got to be doing something, you know? Mm -hmm. And then uh, Michael Hayes told me the deal. You're going to run out, beat up Ziggler, which is like the perfect scenario, right? Okay, yep. Which is great. Yep. Um, So Wow, wow. so I never knew that it was actually planned. Actually, in my mind, they're like, oh, we got to send him out. (laughs) Oh, no, 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 no. And I and listen, I'm, I'm even to this day. Uh, I'm still always ready. I had New York City gear because I was just like pumping positivity into that universe that they got to do something with me here. Like all the stars are aligning. Like, come on. Uh, But there was no plan that at least I knew of, you know, I'm sure there was, but I didn't know of it. So I had this this MSG gear, like Nick's inspired gear, Statue of Liberty gear. It's actually a Mattel figure. Basic. I'm looking at it right now. I can't see. Ah, I'm looking at my shelf. It's one of the basics. And Bill McKean took out all the cool splatter paint because he hates splatter paint and it's the wrong boots. But hey, beggars can't be choosers. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I remember just being backstage and like before like they do a dark match, anything, like the, the, the arena is just rumbling. Like we want Ryder. We want Ryder. And I'm like, yes. Like, this is fucking, this is it. This is great. It was just like the perfect setting. And like I said last week, it was actually better that I didn't f- wrestle Dolph because it made the chance even louder, you know, because they felt like I got fucked. And, and, and I absolutely I remember that. Now that you're, you're jogging my memory. I, rem- I was in the nosebleeds, but all, the whole pre show, people are chanting that. Yeah. And then obviously the match happens and it's just happening normal. 
no Teddy Long to say like it's a tag, it's a tr- three way match yeah. or something. So then, yeah, and, it gets uh, in the YouTube show, I I show some clips. There must have been something where I couldn't show a full pay per view clip. I had to like maybe spice it up, spice it up, splice it up into like five seconds here, five seconds there, because there's a bunch of and then and then mm-hmm. and then. there must have been a reason for that. Um, so I remember just being in Gorilla, like here we fucking go, like. And Stephanie McMahon came up to me, and I don't remember exactly what she said. It was very like complimentary, like you know, like listen to this, like it was it was great, you know. Yeah. I I don't want to even pretend to remember what she said, but it was. Very nice. Okay. You know? Yep. Very nice. Um, so and this is I a long out. way. This is a long way from that weird interaction where she said That's she right, where didn't like it. She, no, she said, I watched a YouTube show. I said, oh, thanks. She said, I didn't say I liked it. <laughs> <laughs> That's also the episode where Triple H says that nobody wants to see me. Right. And I play it. Unedited. Just play. Anyway. Do the running. I'm out there. Hit the Rough Rider. And like, I don't know like what hit me, but I had this like, I did like a DDP, like point to the crowd, do a big circle. You know, so they'd all, yeah, you know, he used to do it before the bang. I never did that before. And I got the woo, woo, woo with like MSG. I got goosebumps right now talking about it. Un- it was un- awesome. Unbelievable. I mean, all this is in the episode. You, you yeah. cut it up nice so that you see all the top things. What a run in. Yeah. Um, um, so and then it, you could still on, like on YouTube like type in like Zack Ryder Pop Survivor Series. It's a pretty wild fan footage too. Right. Yeah. Not to you know mark out for myself. No. But on. then I'm on bro. I'm on like cloud nine, cloud nine, and you know everyone's happy with it, right? I walk out of Gorilla, and Triple H says like "Come here" or something like that, and I'm like, oh, "This is it. This is it. He's gonna give me a hug." He's going to say I was wrong. He's say, all right, all right, kid, you've done good. You know, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it's you, says like, Punk, the next pay-per-view. And he says something like, you can't go dyeing your hair and changing your look. I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah, Vince, Vince doesn't like you changing your look. I'm like, I had that at that time, I've been putting like highlights in my hair. And that was like a fresh, like, you know, I, it was a couple of days fresh. Right. So, like, wasn't like I didn't dye my hair like from brown to pink. It was just like a little lighter because it was a yeah. fresh highlight job. And I was like, the entire fucking Master Guard is chanting my name, and that is what you have to say to me <laughs> that I that I dyed my hair. Or why did I dye my hair? Oh, like watch God. the episode. Like you, you, you guys, if you're listening to this episode, go watch the episode now. Do I look any fucking different? Maybe my hair is like a. Look, oh, two percent lighter, because I just got to die like fresh that week. Wow, I couldn't believe it. Mind blowing. And I was like, and I, I like laughed it off. Like I'm not gonna let this ruin my fucking night. <laughs> yeah, no, no, for sure. But, um, but it, so like, you do make a joke in the show. You say I came to the back. So obviously you're kind of making a joke about what really happened, but like making light of it, you say, Kelly Kelly wasn't there to give me a hug, but Brooklyn Brawler was. And that's true. Brawler gave me a big hug. <laughs> okay, that's cool. I love Brawler. I just saw Brawler at a big event uh, last week. Uh, but yeah, like the, I, I just remember, I could just picture it now. Like Whatever it was from Triple H saying, hey, Zach, or come here, Zach, or whatever he said, to me going over, it could have been, couldn't have been more than two or three seconds, but it felt like an eternity where I was like, all right, he's going to say this. He's going to say that. But all like positive things. Kind of like Stephanie did before the match. It wasn't. It was, and it was no like, all right, well, good job. You know, after he told me the hair dye thing, it was just like, you can't go dye your hair, can't go change. I'm like, what? That is. I felt like they were like looking for things. Insane. Yeah. And then the next night you lose to Alberto on a Rio two minutes, 24 seconds. <clears throat> all right. But, so you know, before that, though, um, for the rest of the night, so everyone got their rider, but. At the end of the show, The Rock's cutting a promo. This is not on the pay-per-view? It's not on the pay-per-view. Okay, now. so I remember it because I was there. So The Rock is trying to cut a promo, and people start to chant, and he kind of stops with a smile on his face because he's like, oh, they're chanting for me. What are they saying? And then he realizes, yeah. <laughs> they're <laughs> saying, you want Ryder. <laughs> so and The tell, Rock is the man. Tell this story. The Rock play. The Rock plays off like, we want Ryder, all that shit. I love it. I'm yeah, a fan, goes, too, whatever I he said. That. Yeah. Yeah, so it was great. He played it off great, and then he killed, you know, acknowledged it, 
put it over, and then they stop chanting it. Very smart. Yes. But I remember I was, and this is not a regret because I don't like to regret things, but I could sense it happening. Like, and I was like, should I just go out there? But obviously I didn't, you know, Uh, imagine that going back and forth with the rock on the mic, like in that time, that time, you know, (laughs) you make a shoot run in. Uh, we did have we did have a shoot running uh, with each other backstage. He says something like, "Oh, you're a tall son, bitch," or something like that. And like a lot of people, even Austin, like made that that uh, remark too. He didn't not exactly like that, but like they thought I was like so short because like I guess I mean I guess when they, you're they, wrestling they, the Big Show or Kane, yeah, you're pretty too short. I, I I don't know if they, if they if they never saw me wrestle, just saw me like on a YouTube show, and like I don't know what they were imagining, right? But hey, listen, it was a great night. Um, I had awesome gear. It got made into an action figure. Uh, Chiapetta stuck backstage somehow. Uh, it was a great, great night. Um, so, what did you do yeah, after I, you? You kept? Did you just go home, or did you party, or? I guess we drove to Pennsylvania. Oh, <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, true. Okay. Um, if if I went back to Long Island, I don't remember doing anything memorable. The night before, we got a little wild. Okay. Uh, but listen, I got to be Survivor Series 2011. I mean, I can't pretend that it wasn't cool that The Rock is talking. Yep. The Rock, imagine how big like The Rock was then. I mean, of course, he's bigger now, right? But even back then, he was huge. It was The Rock. Mm-hmm. He's finally coming back, finally. And, and what's even cooler now that it's just like, you know, popping in my brain now, Survivor Series 1996, I'm there as a fan watching him debut. And now this is supposed to be his 15 year anniversary, and he's coming back, and the fans are chanting for me over him. <laughs> yeah, true. That just popped in my head. Now I didn't even think about that till right now. No, yeah, that's insane. Yeah. Well, you say in the show, highlighted your career, um, and everything's great. All right. Well, that was awesome. Survivor Series 2011. It, it certainly was then. I mean, not now, but it was at that to- at that time. I'm sure it's still 100 percent echelon. It's up there, but yeah, up like for sure. It was number one at that time. Yeah. Are you serious, bro? Tweet of the week. Um, our our podcast with Zach Ryder was so popular it crashed our site. Are you serious, bro? That's from the Marking Out podcast. Your friends, right? <laughs> that's that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. So there you go. Um, then you show a shot of CM Punk seemingly from Raw, and the crowd is chanting, "We want Ryder again." And he tells he stops and he tells Lauren Nitus they want to see. Zach versus Ziggler. I mean, bro, at this point, I got the fans chanting for me. I got John Cena talking to me about me on Raw, unscripted. CM Punk talking to me about me on Raw, unscripted. It's like, let's fucking go already. And you do, because you do get the pay-per-view match in December. Uh, That's right. Which shortly after that, and obviously we'll be leading to talk to that. So we'll, we'll leave that at that. Uh, you say after that, sign this the put your sig on the petition you put a link that petition is dead we can't see it um you do the broski of the week the broski of the week this week is the rock so we already talked about that but you showed the footage there the sign of the week it's a really cool take care spike your hair but there's cutouts for the people holding yeah, i like the that sign. they put their face in there that's cool and, and then they have spiked hair on the poster which i loved it it was great very interesting sign creative um, and then you show a segment from Classics on Demand you, where it's coming to Classics on Demand, Zack Ryder's Iced 3. Tell me about that. So uh, Classics on Demand came to me with this. It was, this is before the network. This Classics on Demand was something you can get on your cable network as a little add-on. And I was going to do a weekly, I'm sorry, a monthly show called Ice 3. Get it? Ice Z, Ice 3. And uh, it was cool because like, Every month I'd go, they would drive me in. I'd get like car service. Mm-hmm. Um, they would treat me like a star. I'd have like hair and makeup. They'd have breakfast for me. It was nuts. That's great. And, uh, you know, it was a lot of work because I am not, how can I put this? I'm not good a reader like out loud. Yeah. Does that make sense? Like even like when I'm like, oh, we know. Reading these reviews, I'm <laughs> we stuttering, read the right? Reviews. We know. Yeah. So like now I have to do it in character. And it's like a moving shot. It's, it's not a teleprompter. You know, I'm not memorizing it. It's almost like I'd rather memorize it where I could like do it in my own way. Right. But 
I, I, I'm, I, I don't know. So I guess some people like really like the teleprompter. I don't like it. Hmm. Um, and also be, because it would be like moving and stuff. But at the end of the day, like it was not hard work. Right. And I didn't, I didn't actually pick the matches. Uh, it was picked for me. And then like, you know, I would just read what was on the teleprompter. That's cool. But sounds like a cool. I do gig. remember there was like, there was an issue at one point where like they just weren't paying me after a couple of months. I was like, listen, it's up to the effect of I'm not doing another one until I get paid for all of these. <laughs> mm. Like, like the ones I haven't gotten paid for. Mm-hmm. Cause it was like an additional payment. And then did you continue? Um, no, I got paid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was cool. It was, you know. <clears throat> okay. All right. So right now we get, uh, I think the best skit of this entire show so far, 41 episodes. Oh, all timer. Best segment ever. I ever. Okay. So now, I'll run through it real quick. You say Thanksgiving is the biggest party night of the year. Thanksgiving um, Eve, bro. Thanksgiving Eve. Is that true for you, Matt Cardona? I mean, it, it was then, not now. I mean, I'm not going to the club now. You're not going out tomorrow night? Or yes, last night? Didn't no. Go out? <laughs> no. Okay. All right. Yeah, me neither. I haven't gone out in years. I did Collecting 101 on ad-free shows. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so you come home from your night. And cheese knocked out on the floor. He's 69ing a Bieber cutout. <laughs> you think he's beat up, but actually he says, Oh, we just had a sick party and there was a girl there and he talked to her. Yeah. You go you go over to Big O, he makes a joke we're not gonna talk about. Dad is there's a, there's, there. a, there's a go- first of all, there's Bud Light Lied cans, Zack Ryder merch, there's a Ghostbusters trap. Yes. <laughs> there's a lot everywhere. Of, if you pause it, like frame by frame, it's like lightsabers. It's a, a Zach Ryder cardboard cut out of the couch laying down. A lot of Easter eggs. Okay, so yeah, super cool. I did notice that. Now, you said you guys had a wild one the night before. Was this during the wild one? Did you shoot this during the party? So we didn't have a party, so we sh- we shot this. And then, I'll explain it after we get through this skit. Okay, so um, you go to your dad. He's got 40s taped to his hands, like Edward 40 hands or whatever that game is. Uh, he's hammered. Now Morrison's in the kitchen. Now he's not, you hear like grilling, like he's making breakfast. Yeah. But I think he's grilling beer. There's nothing in the, like he's <laughs> I think we beer. just wanted the sound. I think yes. we just wanted the sound. <laughs> so he just pours beer in the, in the pan. <laughs> um, now he says, he gets a phone call and he says, yeah. He's wearing my title, by the way. Right. Wearing the internet title. He says, yeah, it's Johnny's Los Angeles story. And, oh, you're going to send a limo. So then you go outside. And he's walking to the limo, and you come. First of all, this is all in one continuous take, like my POV. You're right, but until you. So, and we all, and it was legit done in one take. All right. Yeah, it's you know, great. Like we, we only did it once. Yeah. Oh wow! I didn't. Oh cool. Yeah. Yeah. So then you go outside. That's a cut. <clears throat> um, you walk up to him. Big white, big white limo. Yep. It's uh, there. And you say, "How can you do this for me? It's the only thing I have." And then he says. No one's bigger than this show, not even you. This is right outside your apartment? It was, but then we had to move because the cops were called on us and like they wouldn't let us film it. Where'd so we you had get to a move. Limo? We rented a limo. And you were like, I need a white limo. Yes. <laughs> now, okay, so then he goes to he gets in the limo, shuts the door, but then Big O gets out. I think, I think first of all, when you see the limo, I think everyone knows, if you're a wrestling fan, what's going to happen. So when the door shuts and it doesn't happen, but Big O comes out. All right, okay. So take me with you, John. I thought we were broskies. A little teaser. A little right. false finish, if you will. So then he finally shuts the door. You cut immediately to the explosion from Vince McMahon, whatever it was, four years earlier when he tried to fake his own death on TV. Five years or whatever. Um, and... John Morrison has been blown up in this limo. And then you He's been written cut, off. <laughs> you cut to your dad's crying. He's still got the 40s on his hands. He said, I lost a son. She goes, your son's Zach. He goes, yeah, but John. <laughs> and then you come in, and this is probably one of your funniest things that you ever did on the show. You're like, I can't believe he's gone. And then you go, well, I guess, <laughs> I guess he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, so funny. Okay, tell me about this whole thing. Who comes up with this idea? Why, who, who's like, yes, let's get a limo, let's kill you off. What's going on here? This is like this is a collaboration between myself, Ziggler, and Morrison. Ziggler is there. He's just not on film. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't want to say whose idea it was exactly. Of course, I want to take credit for it, but I don't know if it was my idea. I feel like it was, but Morrison's a crazy sob. I mean, in a good way, and Ziggler's very. Uh, um, you know, creative as well. So it was kind of a big collaboration that we'd get the limo, we'd, you know, blow it up, use the Vince blow up scene, and that would be our way of saying goodbye to John Morrison. Um, turns out like the next night on Raw, he has a match against like The Miz, and then he's gone. <laughs> right. So, um, but the dirt sheets were picking it up like John Morrison confirmed leaving WWE via be killed off on Zack Ryder's <laughs> YouTube show. <laughs> Uh, so then in canon, in Z-T-L-I-S, Z-T-L-I-S canon, and we come back to it a couple more times, Morrison is dead. So right. it comes from heaven. My dad goes to his grave. So we kept him alive even though he was gone. Right, right. Uh, it was it was such a fun skit. Very well done. I don't want to, you know, Barry Horace myself, but very well done. It was just a perfect crescendo, if you will, to the whole... My dad, John Morrison, uh, Angle, um, you know, him stealing my match Survivor. It just everything just kinda it just wrote itself, you know? So he and, knew he knew that he wasn't resigning or whatever was happening. Right. So and, and, and this was the plan to kill him off. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This is the plan. That's cool. Um, so I don't know if that I don't recall if that match the next day was like in the plan. Like maybe I don't think that was originally in the plans. Hmm. I think Survivor Series was supposed to be it. I don't know. I could have that that little fact messed up. But this was definitely supposed to write him off, not only of my show, but of WWE. Um, and so what we did was, afterwards, we all went, we took the limo to Ruth Chris, like a nice steakhouse in Long Island. And then we took it to like the, the, the beach town. Um, well, I lived in Long Beach, but there's like another like area of Long Beach where it's just like bar, 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 yes. bar, bar, bar. Yep. We're like, oh, we'll pull up in a limo, blah, blah, blah. But it's it was so cold in New York. No one was outside. Everyone's inside. Especially we Long pulled Beach. This, yeah. We pull up in this limo. No one even saw us pull up. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I'm thinking there's going to be people like waiting in line, like, you know, you know, convincing the bouncer to let him in. And then this white limo pulls up. That's what I'm picturing. But Long Beach is a ghost town in the winter. Man, this is a weird thing that just popped in my head. If I had to pick one time in this entire show where I could go back in time and be like a fly on the wall or just be like a producer guy hanging out with you guys while you shot something, I think it would be this skit. It was great. It was so much fun. the setup of this skit and then (laughs) hanging out after would be be pretty great. Yeah, it was awesome. And, um, you know, like originally, like, we were doing it right from my apartment. The cops came. We had to move. Uh, it just, it just, it was magic. It really cool. was a lot of fun. And so you tell the limo driver, you're like, "Hey, we got to film something." He's like, "Okay." Yeah, pretty much because we rented them for the night. You know. Okay. All right, that's cool. And, then, um, and now all these years later, Morrison's dead again. <laughs> yeah. So I was going to bring that up, uh, John Morrison. Uh, I actually, I don't think I've ever met him. One of the most hardworking, creative people I know. Uh, oh, you didn't meet him at the bachelor party. He came before you did. Yeah, and left before you got there. Yeah, uh, I was actually with him the night before he got released, and we were just like talking about like life and stuff like that, and his like future plans. And then like the next day, he gets released. <laughs> That's crazy. So I phenomenal think wrestler. Maybe we'll get a little Johnny FWF. Johnny Major. Johnny Major. <laughs> okay. Um, I can't wait to work Johnny Major. Uh, I think this is the best thing for him right now. Um, obviously, you know, I'm sure he's missing that fat WWE paycheck he was getting. Sure, but they weren't really doing much of them. His wife just got let go. Right now, they can do things together and Perfect. move back to LA. He was living in Orlando. Um, so I think the sky's the limit for him. He he puts his mind to so many things and makes them all work. So hmm. hats off. I'm not. I'm not worried about him. Yeah, that's off to John Morrison. All right, uh, you rest in peace. The, <laughs> yes. Yeah. All right, moving on. Um, 
you go to the end of the show. Uh, Cena, you go to Cena to follow on Twitter. He actually said in the middle of the ring live on TV what your Twitter is, which that was pretty cool. Um, then you close out the show, and it ends with the little the the Statue of Liberty logo thing that was on your gear, I believe, right? Yes, yes, that's uh, Dwayne Dugan, uh, the Just Take Care, Spike Your Hair guy. He designed that logo. We have um, that yes. So uh, I wore that to Survivor Series. It actually has like a matching shirt, but I couldn't like do a run-in with like a entrance shirt. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And then that logo later gets altered to be my official T-shirt. So that's perfect. Really cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, an episode. Finish. Yeah, great, great episode. And also the woo woo woo. You the woo woo. You know it. I use the fans chanting woo 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 at the garden. Yes, true. That's right. All right. Let's finish this out. But first, a little word from our sponsors. Okay, what is the Are You Serious Bro Tweet of the Week? Are you serious, bro? The Are You Serious Bro Tweet of the Week comes from downtown Chaz Brown. Woke up this morning next to my fiance wearing one of my at the Macron shirts. Hashtag Are You Serious Bro? Hashtag Living the Dream. My question is, Chaz, was she wearing the shirt or or were you wearing the shirt? <laughs> Good you know what I'm saying? I, 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 at first I read it as, oh, she was wearing it? Yeah. But maybe, as I just read it now, I'm like, oh, maybe you were just wearing it. Huh. Either way, are you serious, bro? I like it. Yeah, follow up with that. All right, know your bro. Use the hashtag know your bro on Twitter, and we'll read a question. We'll ask Broski, and then you get an 8 by 10 So Pat Fitz at doitmong61 says, we kind of already answered this question, but I, there's, a, there's a portion of it that I think that I would like to ask. Describe the locker room during the, the We Want Rider chance over The Rock. Did The Rock say anything to you about it after? You didn't see The Rock. But was anybody else in the locker room going, bro, this is crazy? I think at this point, like everyone was on my side. Yeah. All the boys. Okay. And remember I talked about that Triple H story where he said if it was 10 years ago, the whole locker room would have kicked your ass. And I said, the whole locker room loves me. And then he said, well, that's why the houses are half empty. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we told that story a couple months ago. But yeah, there was... I think everyone was super, super happy for me because, listen, everyone wants to be world champion. Everyone wants to be undefeated. Everyone wants to be a top. It's not reality for everybody. It's just not. Uh, but I wanted more than my spot, and I was going to fucking work for it, and I was going to earn it. I was going to scratch and claw and do whatever I, I could to get it, and I think everyone saw that. Yeah. You can't hate hard work. You can't. You just can't hate it. It's not like I was an asshole. Like, what, what am I really doing? I'm like doing extra work to promote the company so I could be a star to make more money for the company and make more money. For, it was like, what, what is there to be mad? I never understood, to this day, never understood like, like the resentment or the backlash or the hesitation. I agree. It just didn't make any sense to me. 100%. All right, characters debut. Jimmy Art returning. Dad, Big O, Chi, Morrison. This episode, 7 minutes and 22 seconds. Went by fast, though. 306,605. That is a huge number. That's about 100,000 more than most. So this is a I think it's because of that uh, that dirt sheet. True, 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 true. Yeah, yeah, definitely. All right. Well, that's it. ProWrestlingTees.com slash. Big sale. Black Major Friday, Friday baby. You don't even need to type in a promo. It's basically 20% off of everything. I think there's uh, 25% off of uh, AEW shirts and... I said it last week. I think I'm getting an official shirt. It happened. You got it, Mark. Sh- shopaew.com. Uh, search Mark Sterling. There is a nice little shirt there. Uh, if you ever buy a smart Mark Sterling shirt, this would be the one to buy. Thank you very much for all the people that have already purchased it. Um, it's it's a great way to support. But uh, what else do we have to plug? Uh, we, we, we got talked a lot of things. FWF, we, the, FWF, we have the toy please. going. Yeah, the Holiday Toy Drive, Major Rest for Podcast, Holiday Toy Drive. Uh, check that out. Please donate. Go to Ringside Collectibles to donate uh, or come to the actual Toy Drive. All the info is on social media. We've got a big Black Friday sale over at MajorPodMerch.com. Uh, so much cool stuff going on, guys. I know it's a, it's a busy busy time of year for everybody, 
But, uh, you know, we got to keep working. We got to keep plugging. And, uh, you know, like me on Facebook. Hopefully by the time this show ends, we can figure that situation out. Follow me on Twitter. Buy all the Matt Cardona merch. Uh, big AIW show this week. Wrestle K taking on Jay Lethal. Uh, he's your boy now in AEW, but I'm going to give him a new job at, uh, at Wrestle Cade. So. I shook hands with him this week. I said, hey, Mark Sterling. He said, we've met before. <laughs> and I knew that. But I never assumed. You didn't know if he knew. Exactly. Right. <laughs> exactly. Right. Right. I always go, "Oh, good to see you." Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Why did it? Yeah. I do the old "good to see you." That's that's the way to do. It. Even if even if I know I never met him, I give him the, the "good to see you." I just assume. People. How you been? Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. going on? It doesn't matter. Yeah. Hey, brother. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's all I got. All right. PBR, baby. Take care. Spike your hair. Just take care.